So just to get everybody caught up, this is what we're working on right now. It's the Delton Fire Wagon from 1985. Delton Locomotive Works was a famous builder of half-inch scale brass locomotives and they went into business in 1985 and they made seven different brass locomotives but one of their earliest releases was this fire wagon. Well, that's sure something different for a brass locomotive company. Yeah, I don't know what uh, motivated them, but I was thrilled to see it. Oh, no kidding. And I always wanted one of these. And uh, just a couple of months ago, this one came up on eBay. Yes. Uh, this is the only one I've ever seen pictures of. This one belonged to Lenny Schloboda in his massive Delton collection and his entire collection came up on eBay. So, heck, we grabbed it. It's a cool diorama. Unfortunately, this is what happened to it in shipping. Oh, uh, so often does, but that was a disaster. Uh, com and, well, and I contacted the seller and said, we'll, we'll just rebuild it, because I always wanted one of these and I figured it was repairable. Right. So this week, we're going to be repainting everything that was scratched and damaged as well as completely redoing the, the background artwork because as you can see here, when the horses and brass pieces were on the loose, they smashed into the background, uh, the backdrop here and just gouged it and scratched it and destroyed it. So that's one of the things that needs to be completely replaced. Also, the windows here in the general store were knocked totally out. But fortunately, they weren't damaged. We have both of these windows. They just need to be remounted. And I know working with this clear plastic is something you've done a great deal. Right, and it's difficult to work with, with glue and stuff, not mess it up. Yeah, <laughs> you get one shot at it. Yes. There's also a tree missing right here, and I was thinking you could build one of your great wire trees. Right, they're fun to make. So I'm thinking we can do that in a follow-up video. Right. Because that's a technique that I think people would like to see just standing alone. How do you make a wire tree? Right, I learned from my brother-in-law. He was making them, and it was just fun to learn how. There's also no roof on the fire station. That's odd. It's real, and I've often wondered if this diorama was just simply never finished. It gives me that impression because it needs sides and a roof to keep your light in place. So we're gonna finish it. Right. We'll add those parts. So one of the first things I needed to do was take the building fronts off the backdrop so that I could redo the backdrop and that would also make it easier to work on the, the building fronts. The building fronts are held to the backdrop with three screws, so they came off fairly easily. It ripped out all the wiring to do it, but I was able to get the building fronts off. And one of the first things I did there was put the glass, the uh, plastic, if you will, back into the window frames that had all been knocked loose. And then I secured those in place with the super thin uh, super glue. You can just put a little drop along the edge there and it capillates all under the edge where the edge of the plastic is in contact with the window frame. And that way I was able to get all of the windows properly back in place. There's a lot of damage to the front of the building here, but it's just paint touch up, so uh, that should be easy. There's also a lot of uh, nicks and scratches in the cobblestone street and all of the brickwork. And so I thought I would just go ahead and paint over that just lightly with a dry brush using similar colors. One of the things I wanted to do while, while I'm trying to keep everything as mostly original as possible, I, I did want to cheat these colors a bit. I think the original colors were just, well, just really too dark for my taste and okay yeah it's a little artistic license over keeping it original but I wanted to brighten it up just a bit and uh, so here I'm applying an oxide red which is just going to barely show through in some places I'm going to layer over with different colors and different colors until I I get the variation and uh, the color that I want this is a much lighter color wow. 
and here again it's going to be toned down by bringing other colors over the top of it i'm just sort of poking around here this way so that the individual bricks pick up individual character and they're not all the exact same color and moreover they have some edge to them where there's color on the edge that's a little bit different than out in the middle of the brick well, I sure like the new color a lot better than the old color. The old color kind of looks like it's stained with soot or something. Yeah, I think it'd be better to lighten the whole thing up. Right, make it look cheerful. And then while I'm working, I also like to uh, dip my brush in several different colors at once. So there's different colors of paint in different areas in the brush. And then that way, as you're painting, it, it reveals that you get uh, sort of a variation or variegation or whatever in the color because there's actually different colors in the brush itself. Well, keeping in mind it is like a cobblestone street, so it's not going to be perfect, but uh, certainly we want it lighter and brighter. There's a couple of areas here where I want to leave the underlying dark color, sort of like some something got spilled in the road or something i just think it sort of adds some character to the street to have this this dark area over here which is actually going to be mostly underneath the fire wagon and then moving on to the bricks on the building there they are uh, originally a somewhat lighter color but they're really been scratched and broken by the brass pieces knocking around in here and so I needed to touch that up. And again, I wanted to create a little bit more variety in the color of the brick. I also wanted to make sure it wasn't the same color as the cobblestone street. It needs to look more like a, an actual red brick building, in spite of the fact that I'm using basically the same colors that I used on the street. I'm just using them in different mixtures and different amounts. And then as it happens, as the acrylic paint dried, it dried darker and so I, I came back and added a little more brighter color. It's just so hard to predict what these acrylics are going to do as they dry. But uh, you can just keep coming in and adding more color in places and brighten it up. Well, I've had that same experience with the acrylics. You just never know how they're going to dry, but a lot of times it's darker. And I'll do a little swatch on a piece of paper, but it doesn't always help. No, I just have to try and see if you like it. And I thought it would be better to get rid of this tan color. Right. Uh, I think a, a gray, a cement gray, would look so much better than that tan. So a little artistic license here, not keeping it exactly as it was originally done, but changing up these colors a bit. Yes. And then I wanted to do the same exact thing uh, for the curb and the sidewalk. The color that they used originally here is a really dark, almost black color. And again, I just felt like the whole thing would be improved if I used a little artistic license and just lightened everything up. So I'm just, I'm letting some of that underlying color show through but I'm just lightly dry brushing over the top of it with lighter concrete colors, keeping in mind, of course, that these things are gonna dry to a darker color than what I'm putting on here. And then just kind of layer upon layer of this until I get the, the look that I want. And then also making sure that the individual patches of cement are colored to slightly different colors, just, just for, variety and I think it adds a little more sort of realism to it. And then it requires doing uh, coat after coat, thin coat after thin coat because the brush strokes show and you don't want that to happen but you just keep lightly brushing on here adding a little bit of color and a little bit of color and uh, eventually you can hide the brush strokes. Now there's this little piece of floor that goes inside the, the, uh, the carriage house, I guess. 
uh, and it's a much darker color. It's the original color, but I thought to just leave it the original color because when the building is in place, I think it looks pretty nice having it a darker color. And then I really didn't want to change any of the colors at all on the general store. I love it exactly like it is. So I tried to mix up a batch of, of this acrylic, again, being careful to predict how dark it's going to get as it dries, and then apply just some touch up here and there to cover up the scratches and leave the, the base paint alone because I think it's a really nice color. You know, I can't help but think it wouldn't look a lot better with a sign above the door to say that it's a fire station. Well, and you've done a lot of just downloading these things from the internet. Right, just do a photo grab and there it is. And size it and print it. <laughs> exactly. So I found this one somewhere there on the internet and you helped me get it sized correctly. Yep. I love the look. Oh, yes. Just beat up just enough not over the top and speaking of over the top put it over the top of the door there it is mounted it on a bit of plastic and mounted above the door it looks great there it does great suggestion and now what's probably the biggest problem this week the paper backdrop uh, you don't know whether to start completely over again or sit down a ball i thought if i i could get an image capture here and fix it in Photoshop, but it's it's virtually ruined. Oh, absolutely. Those heavy brass pieces rattling around in here during shipping has just gouged it beyond all belief. So one of the first things I did was try to get some accurate measurements on the whole thing so that I could figure out just exactly what size I needed to make the backdrop. The original backdrop had been done in a single sheet and quite large and rather than take it somewhere and have it printed I thought well if I do this in four sections we can do it on our our own uh, inkjet printer rather than taking it out somewhere and having it done. So I figured out exactly how to subdivide this into four separate images and then how to get those sizes into my Photoshop so that I could uh, do it as four completely separate images. And then I photographed the backdrop with just my cell phone, being careful to get straight on to each of the sections that was going to be divided into an image uh, to reduce any keystoning or distortion problems that way and then also staying back from the image a little bit so it doesn't, uh, doesn't get fisheye. And that way I was able to bring the images into my Photoshop and uh, clean up all of the damaged areas and then reprint them. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into how to use Photoshop. There are plenty of tutorials online how to do that, including one that I've put up. But suffice it to say, there are tools in Photoshop that allow you to go in and repair this kind of damage. My favorite being one called the, the clone tool. You can also set the exact size that you want the printer to uh, print it, and it, for the most part, works. And uh, you can print these things out. I chose to print them out in a couple of different light and darknesses so that I could, uh, is that an expression, lightness and darknesses? Anyway, uh, so that I could try them on the model and see if I liked the lighter images like this one or the darker images. As it happens, I felt the darker images worked better as it's uh, kind of in shadow up inside the building. And as it happens, uh, it's just too big to print the entire inside of the fire station in one go. I'm going to have to divide it into two different images, the top floor and the lower floor, so that I can print those out larger so they'll actually fit. Now there's a fun feature in Photoshop called Lens Flare, and I like to use it for different things. But I put it on the lantern here inside the barn in an attempt to make it look like the lantern is glowing brightly. And then I'm planning to drill a small hole through here and put a flickering LED from the backside so that it is actually lighting up. And then with the lens flare around it, I think that will make a, 
a really dramatic and fun effect. You know, I think it would look really good with a real little lantern in there. With that flickering light behind Yes, it. I have all kinds of beads and gems. Let's see what we can come up with. Well, I'll put that in your department then. There we go. So here's the entire backdrop for the inside of the fire station in place, the upper and lower printouts for the upper and lower floors. And it uh, looks pretty good, I think. Well, it sure looks a lot better than it did. <laughs> Just about anything it looked better than it did. Oh, no kidding. Now on to the general store. We're going to have to do the same thing here. Print the sky out separately and then print the inside of the store. I had so much trouble trying to clean up the sky backdrop that I just gave up at one point and said, I'm just going to start all over and draw a whole new sky. So that's what I did. I just, uh, I tried to follow the look of the original, but I just completely started over. I certainly like the new sky better because who's ever heard of yellow clouds? Yeah, the paper had yellowed. Oh, it was horribly. It just, it, it was unsalvageable. But I think that looks pretty good, so oh, I'm gonna great. I'm gonna glue it in place. Well, there you go. Oops. <laughs> I I glued it in upside down. Hey, you know what? I think it looks better that way because some of the clouds I've seen do collect at the horizon. I just I'm using that 3M Super 77 glue, so there's no getting it back off. Uh. -uh. And I thought, well, it's serendipitous. All right. The clouds will be at the horizon instead of up in the sky. Well, and I like it better that way. One thing about this too, this is the most visible part of the backdrop. The only other place you really see it is inside the car barn. Everywhere else, in order to see the backdrop, you have to peer through the windows. Yes, but I like doing that. I like being able to peek through the windows and see what's in there. I've seen that on so many of your models. Exactly. And Delton had modeled a couple of little pieces of furniture. There's a bed here in the bedroom and there's a pot-bellied stove in the ground floor of the general store. That's really neat. Well, it sure looks good in there when you look through the windows. Uh, it looks real to me. And it'll look really cool when your wire tree is here. Oh, right. And now onto the roof. This is going to be a bit of a trick. I'm not quite sure what they were thinking here. I just don't think it's finished. You can't just leave it open like that or, you know, the lights come in and it just doesn't look right. It makes me wonder if they actually finished all five of the ones they said they were going to build. It does. It makes you wonder. So I tried a couple of different uh, pieces of cornice. This has got this dentia work and that right. looks pretty neat. I like that. And I tried this piece. I think that looks good. That does too. But I think, what, the dentia I think looks best. I think so. And it's kind of nice that we just had some on hand. It doesn't hurt to have a few of those pieces on hand. So I started off by cutting out a piece of black foam core to get the shape exactly right. One of the big problems here is the original urethane castings aren't flat or square or anything the background is and so the whole top of this thing is somewhat irregular and therefore I, I felt I needed a pattern to get it right. So I actually started off by cutting out a perfectly square top that would overhang the front a bit and then put all of the irregularities at the back and then cut a separate piece that would encompass the irregularities so that the top here actually overlaps the brick slightly and then I'm going to add a backing board that will lock the whole thing in place and keep the interior lights from shining through the crack between the roof and the very irregular casting. Dealing with the irregularities turned out to be the hardest part of this whole project. The entire roof section actually has to lean slightly toward the back in order to make it all work because the the front edge of the brick is, uh, is so irregular and, and in and out and up and down. So it took a lot of cutting and fitting and fitting and cutting and then uh, cutting out a wedge shape that would go along the back side of the roof in order to fill in the irregularities and the lack of squareness. 
You can see here just how irregular that brick casting is and what I was trying to work around to get it to lock in place properly. I also incorporated on that some tabs that stick down so that it helps lock the whole thing in place. When it's actually sitting in place, it sits on there quite snugly and won't just come off easily. And then some sanding on that back piece to kind of true it up a little bit so it's not quite so irregular and looks a little bit better. And then I, I think it was a successful roof at that point. That's looking really good. Yeah, I, you can't really notice that things are a little bit irregular and out of square. I think it's dressing up quite nicely. Oh, I love it. And then on to painting, I wanted to airbrush it and I wanted to use the same water-soluble acrylics that I've been using, the water-based acrylics. Normally, I use uh, lacquer-based acrylics, acrylic lacquers. And boy, if you get that lacquer anywhere near these water-based paints, the water-based paints just turn to rubber. So I've actually got two completely separate airbrushes, one just for uh, water-based acrylics and one for acrylic lacquers. Thinning is also an issue with these paints. I, in the past, have even just used water for that. That, that qualifies actually as a complete and utter disaster. Don't do that. That jar there, airbrush reducer extender, that stuff is, is the bomb. That's what you really need to thin with. The paint at that point will go on quite smoothly, but it doesn't go on in a very heavy coat. Uh, the key is just keep going back over it and over it, working in very thin coats. I do the same thing with the acrylic lacquers, but it's really critical when using these water-based acrylics. Just keep working in thin coats and going one after another after another. It comes out quite gloss at first and then after it dries a while it glosses off and you get a nice matte finish. But I also finished up here by going over the whole thing with Tester's Flat Clear Dull Coat. Tester's Dull Coat. Now I had tried to match the color on the roof to what was on the window frame so I wouldn't have to paint the window frames, but well, they came in ever so slightly different. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to do the sash, but I'm going to come in here and hand paint the window frames with the same paint so that they match the roof. Now these end wall pieces that plug into the end here, there had been walls there originally, but they had been completely destroyed. And so I just cut out new pieces, but you can see how out of square they need to be to make everything line up correctly. And then I just painted those with the same brown paint that I'd used on the roof. So there's one final bit of repair and paint here, and that's the doors for the fire station that go into the carriage house. Uh, one of them had been broken, the hinges were broken on one. I went through and repaired the damage here, and then fit them in place to make sure that they would go right back where they were supposed to be. And at that point, it was just a matter of uh, touching up the paint. And in the case of the outside part of the door, the red part, pretty much completely repainting them. I started on the inside of the door, the brown part of the door, and just kind of went through with some of my brown paints and touched up the, the marks. And I was pretty much able to match the color and make that work. And then also touch up the hinges and uh, I was able to dial those in and get them looking pretty good. On the red side of the door, I started off by applying uh, a wash. It's almost a black paint, but a very thin, watered down wash of uh, my black paint to get it down into the cracks and everything. I did that a couple of times. That helps hide a multitude of sins and it, it really brings out the wood grain and I think improves the look of the door. And then once that had set, I came back with a, a fairly close matching red and just kept doing that technique of dry brushing over the top to cover up all the scratches and marks. 
and just building that up and building that up until it looked good. I wasn't able to permanently mount the doors until the, the wiring was all done because I knew I'd be moving the building fronts around and around and I'd break them off. So actually mounting the doors was one of the very last things I did. But I just made sure that they fit in place properly and would look good and I think they turned out quite nice. Well, that's looking really good. I like the depth. And choosing the somewhat darker printout, I think, helps a lot. And when we get the your lantern in there, right, that's going to look really amazing. So far, it's just looking amazing. So we're going to pick it up right here, you building your tree. Right. And we'll do a whole show just on how to build wire trees. And then speaking of wires, uh, we'll do an entire show on wire in the entire diorama. We were sort of forced to convert the whole thing to LEDs and give it a proper battery pack. Uh, the original one, all it ever had was two wires hanging out of the back. Oh boy. So <laughs> we're going to finish all that up and add power, but that'll be, that'll be an upcoming show. And I hope you'll want to follow along with that. And so if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. I'll see ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.